Hello. One of the areas we're studying here at Cranfield is how organisations learn to execute projects and programmes successfully. This is a difficult but important area. Learning can be problematic in any organisation, but in a project-based organisation it's particularly challenging. That's because all projects are, to a greater or lesser extent, unique. They all pose at least some new challenges that the organisation and the participants haven't seen before. Projects are also normally temporary endeavours with people brought together for the duration of the project who will go their separate ways after the tasks are complete. So there's often no natural place for the knowledge gained to be stored. The organisational learning literature shows us that firms can learn to be better at what they do and that this learning can be captured in many places. Firstly, the projects and programmes we're investigating are examples of knowledge-intensive work. In order to execute the project, the organisation is dependent upon the expertise of the people doing it. This expertise can be broadly split into two aspects, explicit knowledge and tacit knowledge. Explicit knowledge can be codified and shared. An example would be knowledge of how to use a particular computer system. It can be written down as a set of rules and taught to the staff. Tacit knowledge is much harder to transfer. An example would be how to ride a bicycle. You can't explain to a non-rider how to do it. It can only be learned through experiencing it. Often tacit skills are the more valuable of the two, as key skills such as professional judgement may be tacit and cannot simply be captured in a database. Sharing that learning within the organisation is therefore difficult. Secondly, a lot of expertise is captured in the day-to-day -day work of project teams. We know that knowledge can be embedded in practice. Communities of practice are groups of specialists who share their particular expertise. The group interaction is a way to store the experience of its members. It's also a powerful social network. If the project team members have a network of contacts to call upon for assistance, that can be highly beneficial. But it's also important to recognise the power of shared language, mutual understanding and trust that can aid project success. Finally, much of an organisation's memory can be captured in routines and procedures updated over time. Lessons learned documents can codify previous good and bad experiences so that others can learn from their successes and failures. This way, the organisation as a whole can learn. So, if we manage these three levels, people, groups and processes, we can bring the organisational expertise to bear on the next project or programme and the outcome of the work should benefit from all that the organisation knows. Well, it won't surprise you to learn it's not quite that simple. For any new project, we have to determine the balance between using, exploiting the existing knowledge and creating or exploring new knowledge. How is this balance affected by the type of project and what is the relationship with the project outcome? This is the research we're engaging in, looking at how organisations not only use what knowledge they have, but also when it's beneficial to create, transfer and capture new knowledge. What drives that balance? And what can managers do to make more intelligent choices within their projects and programmes? If you're interested in taking part in this research, please contact ICPM. Thank you.